Hey everybody, uh, we're going to finish up the second session of the practice test. We only have two more problems to do, go with, so let's jump right into it. Uh, if you're working on this, you've, hopefully you've already heard me say this, but just in case, uh, you want to click on the digital link, which is in the video description, so you can try this problem first on your own. You can see how it works, because the interface, especially with this problem, is, is a little different than what you might be used to. Uh, and then check your answer, and then, and then you should be watching this. This is also a PDF you can click on, download, and print up if you want to follow along with that as well. But make sure you're trying this digitally first. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Consider this inequality, the absolute value of 4 minus 2x is greater than 6. What is the solution set of the inequality? So they're asking for the solution set, okay? So we have an absolute value of inequality. Select one or more solution set indicators, drag the point. Okay, so the way it's going to work is you're going to click on something, It'll appear on the number line, and you can drag the, uh, the circle. That's how this works. All right, so let's just solve this. So this problem is, you, you need to use scrap paper for this problem. Uh, spoiler alert, I've already said that a billion times, I'll say it again. Uh, so I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to say 4 minus 2x is greater than 6, and I'm going to write 4 minus 2x, oops, 2x is, that looks terrible. Let me rewrite that, sorry. 4 minus 2x is less than negative 6. So I rewrote this twice. Uh, I changed the inequality symbol while also changing the sign of the other term, and that's how you solve these. So let's go ahead and solve this. So we're going to subtract 4 from both sides, and we're going to get negative 2x is greater than 2. We're going to divide by negative 2, and we're going to get x is less than negative 1. You'll notice I changed the direction of the inequality symbol. That's because I divided both sides by a negative. You have to remember to reverse the direction of the inequality symbol when you do that. They're kind of banking on that students are not going to remember how to do that. So it's also kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of, I don't like the fact this is a digital problem because it just specifically requires you to be writing this down. But whatever, I guess it's easier for them to grade. Negative 2x uh, is less than negative 10. Now, again, we're going to divide by a negative. So because we're dividing by a negative, we have to change the direction of the inequality symbol. So this becomes x is greater than 5. Okay, so we're just going to graph this now. So I would first choose this option and place it at the 5 and go this way because it's greater than 5, but it's not inclusive. So it's going that way. And this is x is less than negative 1, so you're going to choose this option and you're going to put it above negative 1 and go that way. So again, if, when you're doing this online, you should already try this. You can just click and drag these things. And that's it. That's the answer for number 12. All right, number 13. 13. Okay, I'm going to try to explain this as simply as I can. So it's really not super complicated if you just really figure out what's happening here. A right circular, right circular cylinder S is here. Oblique circular cylinder T is here. And some of the dimensions are shown in this diagram. So they tell us they have the same uh, height, right? The same perpendicular height. We have that. And they have the exact same diameter. Now, because they have the same diameter, that also means the radius is the same. So they have the same height, remember that, perpendicular height, as well as the same radius. They don't tell us the radius, but they tell us the diameter. But we can because they have the same diameter, that means they have to have the same radius, because radius is half the diameter. So these would both have one and a half centimeters as a radius. Okay. What statement about these cylinders is true? So I'm going to like make this real simple and let you know that if you have a slanted cylinder, like this one, it's, a, it's oblique, but we think of it as slanted, honestly, when you look at it, and a right circular cylinder, as long as their perpendicular heights and radiuses are, are the same, they're going to have the same volume. And... Think of it this way. Think of as, think as if like this cylinder was actually a stack of discs. Like think of like a bunch of frisbees, right? And you're stacking them, right? And you're gonna have a certain number of certain number of them. Okay, and they get to a certain height. If you take that same same stack of, of frisbees and slant them over to the side, they're still gonna be the same height, right? And you're still gonna have the same thickness. Nothing's changing really. As long as the radius and the height's the same, which they should be. They should technically have the same volume inside of it, right? And that's true. So as long as the perpendicular height and the radius is the same in these two cylinders, they're going to have the same exact volume because the space, in, the space inside of it wouldn't change. You can skip the rest of that. Okay? So I actually think it's a, a pretty easy problem once you kind of get your mind wrapped around that. Okay? So that concludes the second session. If you've watched all these videos, hats off to you. That, that would be both sessions one and two completed for the practice test. I'm going to start working on the uh, 2019 spring release uh, items, and that should be, I should probably be able to post one or two today, and then hopefully before vacation, we get at least the first session done. All right, thanks for watching, guys. By the way, let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions or something didn't make sense. Thanks.